right, so good afternoon, everyone. My name is Justin Klein. I'm the project lead for Microsoft Teams and the rollout for the Air Force. So as most of you have seen from some of the other conferences or some of the other breakout sessions you've gone to, we've talked about a lot of things that are coming down the road. The good news here is Teams is very close to being out, and a lot of your cases is already out. So the things you're seeing here, you'll be able to go back onto the Air Force network and use. Awesome. Hi, everybody. Sorry for the wait. Um, my name is Rima Reyes, and I work for Microsoft, as you can see by this insanely large lanyard. Um, I work for the Teams product group. So essentially, I work for the part of Microsoft that helps and builds to develop and create Teams. So I work directly with our headquarters um, engineers and developers that actually build Teams for DoD. Um, I've been taking like a really close eye on US Air Force because you guys are really ahead of the game. Um, and so we want to ensure that you know, everything's great with the product. So that's why we've got a really close relationship um, between essentially the government folks and the military folks and myself. Um, so I've actually, I want to say really quick, I've had a long history in the Intel community as well. So I'm really familiar with this space even prior to joining the product group. So government is what I love and I'm really passionate about it. So it's also why I'm here. Okay, so what is Microsoft Teams? Um, so Justin, let me ask you this. How do you envision Microsoft Teams? Like, what does that mean to you? All right, so today we have all of these cloud services that we've built out over time. We have SharePoint Online, you have OneDrive, you have email, and you go into a different application to use all of these things, including Skype, your one-on-one -on -one conversation. So what Teams gives you and the main value for you is that this is a one application window into all of those services. In addition to that, it brings some new things that you've never, you may have never seen before and used, and you go into those things. Yeah, so um, that's a perfect explanation to you. Um, and I swear I did not tell him to say Keith, that's his own volition. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so Microsoft Teams, in, in the engineering team, in the product group, we say that Microsoft Teams is actually the presentation layer to everything else in Office 365. So a lot of times we have various applications that usually are all over our desktop or you know, we have a lot of different files. Teams really brings all of that together into a single pane of glass. Kind of like Outlook, like Outlook is like your one productivity hub too for email. Microsoft Teams is a little bit different because it's really for chat, um, for things that are a little bit more quicker for collaboration, like if you wanna quickly share a file instead of emailing it, it's a lot faster to do it in Teams. So. We call it the hub for teamwork and DoD. We have three main pillars, communicate, collaborate, and working with confidence, really security, right? And the first pillar, communicate, we have persistent chat. Does everybody know what persistent chat is? What, somebody want to say, yeah, what is persistent chat? It's available all the time, even if you're not having the window open in front of you or downloaded. Exactly, perfect. And that's very different than Skype. Who's familiar with Skype? That's not. Okay. okay. I'll talk a little bit about Skype later on. But, um, <laughs> um, so persistent chat means that you have that entire chat history, right? It doesn't go away when you close the window. It's still there when you reopen the application, which is really important. You also have group chat. Group chat essentially means you can have more, anytime you have more than two people, so essentially like three people or more in a chat conversation, that's called group chat, and you have persistent chat with that as well. So really important. Let me go over an example for that. One thing that we have found by using it in the Air Force with the, amongst our beta tester group. So you've got a group of people and you're all chatting back and forth. And let's say you've, you've worked through some project details. Now you want to add a new person to the group. Well, the nice part about the Teams application and service is when you add them, they have the entire history of all the chats that you've done. So they can see what decisions you've made, why you've made them, any kind of communication you want to provide to them is given already. Yeah, that's, really, that's a really good point. That's really important. When I worked at the National Security Council, I worked at the White House for six and a half years prior to joining Microsoft, and everything was really fast in terms of document collaboration. I mean, if the president needed content, he needed it five minutes ago. Um, and also having a history or understanding of how that decision was made was really important. So if we had Teams back then, who would have been revolutionary, but we didn't. Um, teams also has meetings, too, um, and these are just peer-to-peer -peer online meetings. Do you want to talk a little bit about meetings? 
Yeah, so uh, most of us today use the telecom services through DISA or through maybe other parties. And one of the big problems I experience as an end user is I meet with 100 people in the telecom, somebody goes on mute, and you guys know the story, you have the music playing in the background, you tell somebody, please stop, you know, no one stops, and then you try to talk over them, and it becomes a mass chaos. Well, with a team service in a meeting, you can hold, granted, again, this is all using a microphone attached to your computer, but you can hold a meeting with a group of people, and you can see exactly who's talking at any given time. And you have the ability to go in, now they're muted. So, there's a lot of other features that come with that. You can all take meeting notes together while you're in a meeting. It, you can record meeting notes and push them back into your team. There's a lot of other features, but to me, that is the primary annoyance I have. And Dennis in the back can talk to that. Yeah, we've had many meetings where we're shouting at people to please don't use, don't put us on hold. <laughs> so how does that scale? Like, I mean, I don't know if you've ever dialed into the cybersecurity forums but they're always a nightmare, there's mm -hmm. tons of that, but there are I mean, hundreds of people trying to dial in. Can it support that kind of volume? Yeah, so peer-to-peer -peer meetings right now can support up to 250 people. Uh, eventually, that's what's on the roadmap is to have something called live events. It's not in DoD yet, it's, it's gonna be further down the road, and that will have the ability to hold up to 10,000 people. Nice. Yes, yeah. but it's not here today, so just, you know. <laughs> Um, okay, so the second pillar, collaborate, which is the, the core, the meat and potatoes of this thing, right? Um, I know Microsoft Teams is a really generic name, right? I'm sure people are like, what does that mean? But really, the, the crux of all of this is this app right here, this Teams thing right there, that icon. Um, because essentially, you can create a team, and a team is a workspace where your work team, like your colleagues, and you can work together on content, you can chat together, you can pin certain things that you want within your workspace and it's all just one place, right? Before in the past, like sometimes like, you know, I work with my colleagues and I have to send an email and then I have to go visit a different website because I had my favorites there or my files were here. Everything is just jointed, right? Teams really brings all of that together into a seamless workspace. That's really easy to understand. Do you want to talk about so, Teams? Yeah. I have a question for everyone. Who here loves SharePoint? Loves it. He's crazy about it. I'm a former SharePoint uh, person, so. I'm also the SharePoint program manager. So I'm sorry. <laughs> but, there we go. There you go. <laughs> Teams gives you an overlay to SharePoint. So you don't have to worry about all of the billion other features that SharePoint gives you. As an end user, you just put your file in there and you collaborate on it with your team. That's it. It's as easy as that. It connects in your OneDrive. So your OneDrive account, you can take the file, share it with your team members. You can all collaborate it on at the same time. You can see who's typing what at the same time. Simple as that. You don't have to go into all of the complexities of SharePoint and worry about people messing up all the permissions, messing up things in your SharePoint site. You don't have to do any of that anymore. So it's a huge value for us just in that proposition. All right, and so working with confidence. So Teams for DOD is accredited for DISA IL-5 information. Um, so you can have solace in the fact that everything that you're putting in Teams is okay, and it's okay by DISA. So we've already done the hard work for you, the accreditation piece. And I'll add to that, uh, the IL-5 means that the files are double encrypted. They're encrypted at the database level, they're encrypted in transit using the latest standards, the AES-256, uh, and it's FedRAMP approved. So this environment was built for the DOD's information. Oh, and it's so, HIPAA as well, too. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't even know that. It's also HIPAA approved as well, so. And on, on permissions, the, nice, the other nice part about the team function is when you create a team, by default, they are private. So that means any information that you're sharing across the team is only searchable by your team members, no one else. That's a good point. Um, so Microsoft Teams was actually built uh, from kind of the ground up through a web-based interface. So we really kind of focused on, okay, how can we make it into a product that is easily, easily portable to any sort of device, right? Because we know all over the world people have various devices. Now in DoD, and, and especially specifically in US Air Force, we've got the desktop application available and the browser version available. I know uh, like mobile, so Teams Engineering is gonna have Teams available on like an iPad or an iPhone soon, but we know that there's extra processes that US Air Force has to take in order to enable that piece as well. 
Right. Um, so I don't know if you want to talk so about. on the roadmap for the Air Force today, as I said, we've turned on the license for almost every user for the web client. So you can go in through Chrome, Edge, and Firefox to access this application. And we have a link for you at the end to tell you how to get to that. Um, additionally, the web, the desktop client, we're pushing out slowly. We're still working with the Effect Mode Program Office to see if we can push that out. But our target is the end of September to get to offer that up to everyone. And if it's not available through a push, then we're going to offer it up through other methods, either probably through SCCM, so you can go out and get it. There we go. Oh, one other thing. Oh, yeah. The mobile portion is coming, but we still have a couple things that we need to work out with this uh, on what connections we need to enable to allow that. But that is very much the Air Force's goal to open up teams and all of the chess services to mobile devices. Oh, yes. Okay, so there's a couple portions to that question. First, I'd like to address the bring your own device perspective of this. Um, right now, that is on a roadmap. That is some, also a place that we want to get to, but we need to solve the mobile uh, on GFE first. Once we get there, we're looking at solutions that will allow us to do it on bring your own device. I don't know, Dennis, if you wanted to add anything to that. So yeah, so I'm Dennis Plansky. The mobile PM, also work with Chad Prevail and partnering with Justin on uh, Teams. So, working with them on OneDrive and some other things. So, our goal is that we make the Airman mobile, right? So, it is to get it on that device. It is to get the native container, not, you know, right now we use Blackberry UEM, but how can we get it natively? Um, we're working through those things with Justin and then. I guess Mr. Kaninsky was up here earlier from uh, SAP, uh, working on the BYOED. There is a proof of concept that went on and uh, working through the results of that. Colonel Strunk back there from SAP, working through the different policies. Now, when it, you talk to Mr. Greenwell at DOD, uh, the security guy, Slack is in an IL too, maybe even if it's an IL. Why, you know, you can drop FOU out there and it's out in the wild, wild west, probably hosted in other nations. Those are some of the adversaries that we have today. Um, so, so the goal is that you would use Teams, and it is on the mobile device, has Slack, and you can just pop in and out of that. But by policy is really, I think, enforcement. Having worked at DISA, they'd really like to cut the connection to Slack because of the information that's being spilled out there today. Does yes. that answer it? It, it does. It's okay. just, I was just curious if it is going to go to commercial mobile just because obviously- So our goal is hard. that, and, and so yeah. our other goal is that we want you to use it, not have to use it because of policy. Exactly. So we gotta get that end user experience there, but we're not there yet, so we're working towards that. Yeah, something just really quick to note about Slack, because um, I, I have purview to about like 14 million end users with, with Gov um, using and Teams. And what's interesting is that we've had a lot of interesting scenarios where we've had customers use WhatsApp or Slack. And unfortunately, when you have the free version of either one of those, Slack owns your data. And if you are part of a team, and let's say you get fired from work or you know, you were forced to leave, you still have access to that information if you're on Slack or WhatsApp, which can be a huge security risk. With Teams, it's a centralized admin, right? So your identity follows how you are in the workplace. So essentially, if you get let go, if you move to another company, that data, that, that essentially entry point to that data gets cut off. So no longer can you access it once you leave. So that's really the big, I think, kind of like selling point with Teams is really security here.
for the most part. So. And I would add in the integration with the other services, many of which you guys haven't seen yet, but they're on the roadmap to be delivered as part of Chess as well. Forms and flow, workflows that pass through all of the services will go through Teams also. So it kind of enhances that and it gives more incentive to use it. And then also our slogan is WWSD, what would Slack do? So we are aware of it. <laughs> Did not know that, good to know. <laughs> So I went a little nutty with the uh, with the Air Force images on the uh, Air Force website. So excuse my like excitement here. Um, so the reality of the modern workplace. So um, we have a lot of studies done in uh, in the product group, and so 20% of our average workday is spent tracking down information. Who feels kind of that pain? People are like yeah. <laughs> 28% of an average workday spent managing email. I feel like mine is 50, but I don't know what you guys <laughs> And then 59% of leaders say that they're missing important information daily due to information overload. I mean, they, even if you're not a leader, right, there is information overload, right? So Teams helps kind of focus you on where you need to be and where, what information you need to um, actually read or get to. So why teams? So I know we've sprinkled a little bit about the why, but Justin, why do you think the Air Force should be using teams? Um, I've already mentioned a couple of those reasons earlier, but you mentioned the email thing. So I get several hundred emails a day, sometimes more than that. I can't sort through all that. Whereas the teams that I've been using in conversations, I never have to go back to an email. And I see this greatly reducing the amount of email traffic we do as an Air Force. Now that's not going to prevent information overflow, you're always going to have that. But Teams has built in filing system for that information. Uh, and the search capability is far more robust than what you get in trying to find an email in a haystack. Uh, all of our communications are filtered in, and we'll go through the channels and the demonstration. But they're all filtered into which groups are, meant, are used in a team and which channel is talking about what. So you kind of know where to go to find things. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's a, that's a great point. You know what's what's interesting? When I when I first started living and experiencing Teams, now I know I work for Microsoft, which is a commercial company, totally different environment, right? Apples and oranges. But I will say this: there was an interesting change in behavior that I experienced. And behavior and end user experience is really important to me. I was actually a psychology major in college, so I care about what people think and how they actually perceive technology. It's one of my passions. What was interesting is that I started using email a little bit yes, less and I was more conscientious about who I sent emails to. So I had more email etiquette because I knew email took time to read through. And it was more, it's not that it's a bad thing, it was just it took a little bit more time. I had to be more focused and detailed on email. And then internally in my company, so if I ever wanted to communicate, for example, with Amanda who's sitting in the back, she works for Microsoft, I just wanted to send her a quick note, I would use Teams. And I realized the response and reply time was much faster than having to go through email. But email's still a really important part of my day. I majorly, for the most part, use email to communicate with external entities, so anybody outside of Microsoft. So that was just an interesting shift that I experienced, not saying that you guys are gonna have the same experience, but outside the company, email, inside Teams, so. So just to kind of support what Justin just said too, um, there's been a study done, a Forrester study, that four hours a week at minimum were saved using Teams. And then essentially for a 5,000 user organization, which you guys are about 600,000, maybe more. Se I'm sorry, 700,000. Um, that'll probably be a higher cost savings for you guys. So I expect that check. <laughs> <laughs> we'll ask Forrester, like, hey, run this <laughs> um, So we can deep dive into a little bit more. I'm gonna kind of set up a little bit um, the details of the communicate, collaborate, and working with confidence. And then Justin, while well, I'm running maybe through the first two slides, can we try to see, um, well, I guess I can't really do that with, with your machine, but I'd like to try to test out your machine to see if that'll work for the demo at, at this point, so afterwards, so. Okay, so we talked about communicate. So we talked a little bit about threaded and persistent channel discussions. Channels are essentially a subtopic and a team will go through that. Um, you can stay in sync with private chats. We talked a little bit about that before. Justin, I think you have a good story regarding communicate across geographies. Oh yeah, so our organization is geographically separated. Most of my home office is at Hanscom, and it's been a pain, just a real pain. I'm sure you, those of you in the same situation understand. 
trying to communicate and stay on top of things is nearly impossible through email. You know, you get so much email anyway, you can't read it. But using this service, I'm able to just dial in members of uh, my home office at Anscom and have a quick call, or I'm able to set up a chat and uh, just helps the collaboration greatly. And I know once you'll use it, you'll see what I'm talking about, but just being able to scroll through and go through all of those communications so that I'm, I'm up to speed with what's going on at the home office is hugely beneficial for me. So I see this helping out those organizations across the Air Force immensely. Yeah, and something to add to this too, like a lot of times our communication can seem really formal, and sometimes that, that can pe give people some anxiety because they're like, Am I writing the right words? Like, you know, I read, I reread emails that I write sometimes several times just to make sure that I'm not saying something colloquially. And anyway, so Teams takes down some of that, you know, kind of rigor a little bit. And you can actually use uh, stickers and uh, emojis and memes in your team's conversation. So you can do smiley faces or like face palm is my favorite one. It's like, oh. Yeah. Anyways. Finally, we can communicate through emails. I'm glad we've reached this point. Sometimes a meme does more justice than a meme. Yeah. It's like an understanding without saying words, yeah. All right. Um, and, and so I know this is like a really like, oh, whoops, there we go. Um, we've got a couple of pictures here, and I know this isn't you know, necessarily Air Force pictures. It was hard to replicate this with Air Force pictures. Um, but this is an example of what a meeting looks like. Who uses an iPhone and has like FaceTime? Yeah, does this look a little familiar to FaceTime if you have like multiple people? you chat with them, or I think even Google like has their like group meeting solutions very similar to this too. Now, when you're sitting at your desk, Justin, do you have a webcam? Uh, it's been to sit. Okay, so. <laughs> it's totally fine. Do you need a webcam to talk? No. Okay. No. As a matter of fact, uh, for us, the webcam really doesn't add a lot, but the key is the audio conferencing. That's where, as I mentioned earlier, that's where we get a lot of value, particularly with the large telecoms that we. Yeah, and the call quality, I mean, in general, like we take ourselves, we take pride in the platform to say that the call quality is really, really supreme. And I'm sure, I'm sure Justin, you would agree with that too. But I've noticed even a difference from moving off of Skype and into Teams. The call quality is way different. Yes, yeah, question back. So is this, uh, can we use Teams, uh, say, with contractors? Meaning, I have a telecom, I have a telecom, I got military members that are going to be in it, I have this contract agency that I'm doing business with. Will it be able to be used in that sense as far as holding home? So this service is only right now built for members that have Capcom and an AFNET account. So as long as they have that, then yes, you can use it with them. I will caveat so though. Keith, do you have something to add on that? Oh yeah. yeah. So a couple things. One, if you have users who are external sitting at their, their corporation, if they have access to the cap card, you know, we're working on a solution that would allow them to be able to use Teams. But the other portion of this is, is Coming down the line, there's a separate solution that would allow different tenants to federate so that you could share with a company's IO4 tenant and, and have that communication, but it's not there yet. But that is in the roadmap. Uh, it's a combination of the flow three and the business. Now, the other that's thing, you, that's you, actually you, a very good point. Sorry, so, so you mentioned the telephone. <coughs> it's not a, today, it's not a teleconference. Right. It's audio calls. So, so there, there is this big difference. Now, there is another feature coming, it's on the roadmap, that you would be able to purchase for telecommunications. But it's the audio that you want And that's what I meant. Oh, no, no, I get it, but some people, they hear different things, but it, it's the audio So the other thing is the other services, the Navy, Marines, DLA, they're moving into Office 365. Very near term, we're going to federate between the other services, so you'll be able to collaborate with with all of the joint services that way. Really pretty awesome. Um, all right. Question? For the telecom group? Not today, but that is coming in the future. Okay. Yes. So yeah, uh, another asterisk coming <laughs> soon. Uh, there is an Office 365 service called Stream that will be like YouTube for the Air Force. That will let you record your meetings held through this and then play them back and even transcribe them, I believe. Yeah, in the future, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other questions before you? Okay. All right. 
Um, so collaborate, this is again the meat and potatoes I was talking about before. So this is where the actual team, if you create a team with your, with your work buddies and start collaborating on information, you can share and co-author office documents within the Teams app. And Justin knows the answers to what is actually helping you enable to do that. SharePoint. Oh, yeah. So you know. this uses SharePoint as the back end, which we mentioned, but it's hidden to the end user. So all those people that don't like SharePoint, if you're using it, you just don't realize. Love it. You love it. Love it. Love it. Great. That's Thank the right you. answer. Thank you. Um, you also get built-in apps, so Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and SharePoint, and there's, a, and there's a wiki as well, and there's a few more coming down the pike too. So you'll be able to integrate all those apps within your team. You can also search across people and files. Justin was talking about that earlier. That's, it's pretty amazing. I actually used to use SharePoint search a lot, and now I actually just use Team Search because it searches through SharePoint as well, which is really cool. Yeah, so one thing I, I don't think Rima is showing, the files button on the left actually goes through, here are all your recent files used across all of your teams. So if you've touched anything recently, it'll let you know. You don't have to go find it. Here it is, just click on it, go access it. Yeah. Question? So right now you can. Now there are some policy things that we're going through with SAP on do you need PIAs to, to be able to do that? So maybe that changes in the future. But right now the policy is you can. Uh, everything needs to be made private so it's not searchable, but you can do that. Yeah, and to add to that search piece, which I think you touched on it earlier, everything is security trimmed. So if I search for something in Teams, I'm only finding results of things I have access to. I'm not going to be able to find things that I don't have access to. So it's really important is the security trimming on that piece. Question? Yeah. So if you're sharing files because it's uh, SharePoint is on the back side of it, when you save those files, do they go into, just like say for instance, I'm coming out of Teams and go into SharePoint, will I see those same files that I've, that I've shared in Teams? Yes, and so what this does is when you create a team, it creates a new SharePoint site. Oh, okay. So you could access it by going to the SharePoint site if you okay. wanted, if you love SharePoint like me, <laughs> then you can do it that way. Yes. This is a better interface, a much easier to use interface for that type of collaboration. Do you have any more questions? Okay. Okay, so working with confidence, again, we touched on this earlier a little bit too. Um, the, the biggest thing here, and I, I mentioned this with Slack, is the single admin experience. Do, do you have a question? question? I, I'm just trying to put it all together. Like, I'm an ISSM for one of the jobs that I do, so <laughs> that's a job that you don't have all the information. So mm -hmm. we've linked up on Skype to it's been a lifeline to help each other. So this way we can do it, but our conversations don't disappear and we can have files to help each other out is what you're saying. That's right. That's so I'll give an example. When I, when I switched roles in Microsoft, I joined a different team. I had no idea you know, what, who was who or even the context of what was happening. I had no history. Um, but they started adding me to some of the teams and I was able to actually go back in time and see a lot of content, what decisions were made. I had context as to what was going on with my role today and it actually helped me get up to speed much, much faster if I didn't have that information. So it's really the beauty of like persistent chat, right, within teams here. And the direct correlation is when I worked with my ISM and ISSOs to put together the UMass package, we handled all that through a channel. So all of the files, all of the, the cybersecurity plan, all of those things were done through a channel in our team. All right, so let's see if we can do a demo. Do you want to wanna try to see if, we can, if your computer would work? So give us like two minutes while we switch over. If you guys have more questions, feel free to ask them. So with the conversation. Question? So, oh, oh, sorry. So, uh, you know, being asked to start a team shoot. So let's say you're in a team of like five people, you have a person that Great question. So a team has an art, a structure to it, right? A role structure. The person who created the team is the owner, and they have control on who else gets added. You can give other people owner privileges if you'd like, but by default, when you add other people, they're just members. So that's part of the etiquette of using teams 
Uh, so far, we've put together an edited guide that, we, that will be out in a public team that you can find when you get access to the service. It'll explain those types of things. Can you come here and log in? Don't mind. Perfect. Oh yeah. yeah, I'm so sorry. Yes, we missed the a conversations. Yeah, um, like in Skype, and I think he said something about it's different than Skype or Skype yeah. for Business or whatever. But with Skype, the conversations are saved in Outlook. Correct. Is that the same? Is it this tied to Outlook in any kind of way? It is actually. Your conversations are stored in Outlook mm -hmm. in your mail profile. You just don't have access to see them, and the reason is is that all your conversations are saved in the Teams client anyway. So you don't have to go to Outlook to go search it. Okay. So it's literally like single pane of glass. Like you just go to Teams to search, find anything you need. You don't have to switch. Okay. It's really important. Yeah, question. For the uh, meetings part, can you do full screen sharing? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, OK, great. OK. So this is what Teams looks like. And this is Air Force Teams. So this is real. This is real to you guys. I wanted to make sure that we did like a real demo. <laughs> um, so on the top left here, and I'll use this. So on the top left right here, this is called the app bar. You've got activity, chat, teams, meetings, and files. Right here is the left rail. This is where all your teams are. And over here is the main arena. So anytime you basically push a button here and then push a button here, that influences what happens here. So essentially, it's a cascading effect, right? So Justin, do you want to show us, yeah, one of the teams? So Justin is showing us our O365 Teams soft launch. And this was a team to play in Teams. I know that sounds crazy. But <laughs> um, and as you can see, we've got some Windows 10 emojis here right into the channel names. And a channel essentially is a subtopic of the team. So you're right now, can you click on like one of the channels? So perfect. So Justin just clicked on a, on a channel. And as you can see, this window changed. And we've got three main tabs up here. We've got conversations, files, and wiki. Conversations is where your persistent chat goes through. So Justin, do you mind like scrolling up and just so it goes all the way for it, right? And you can see there's files embedded in here, right? So there's context to the files that you're sharing. You're not just like dropping an email and being like, hey, good luck, like go have fun with it. You're providing context to the files that you're sharing, which is really important because we have information coming from everywhere. So a lot of times we really need that context. Um, <clears throat> can you scroll all the way back down, too? So do you guys see this, this purple line right here? I know it's, it's tiny. Should we zoom it in? Can you guys see it? You can see it? Okay. Um, that last red line is basically telling Justin, hey, you've read everything before that, but you haven't read everything below that. So this is what you need to focus on because you haven't read that part. Do you see that in Outlook? No, right? And that's, I mean, for me, I mean, I love Outlook, but for me, that's what takes time because I have to go through the whole entire reply history, right? Um, can you show uh, the files tab? Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. So Justin just clicked on the files tab, and the secret trick is that SharePoint is actually behind the scenes here. So SharePoint is storing your files for you, right? So nothing's changed in that perspective. You can still create folders. You can still upload files. And can you click on Open in SharePoint? And if you really love SharePoint, because I love SharePoint, because I came from the SharePoint world, so I love it, you can actually go directly to the SharePoint site if you want, so long as you are a member of the team or have access to the site, right? And there it is, regular SharePoint site. You can do all the same things you can with SharePoint. Yeah, question in the back. So with the files thing, I noticed that you can have multiple messages maybe with the same file attached. So is it just putting a single copy here in the file area, mm -hmm. all pointing? Okay. And if, it's, if there's a duplicate, then I'll ask you if you'd like to overwrite the previous. Yeah, so single source of truth. Mm -hmm. How many people have done like a v.1, a v.2, a v.3 of a document? And like, oh, I have to like merge the changes. Like it's so <laughs> difficult, right? You don't have to do that with Teams in SharePoint, but. Um, okay, and then do you, I don't know if you have anything on the wiki on that. Okay. 
Yeah, so this is a wiki right here, and a wiki is part of the tab. So essentially, a wiki is like you could just, you know, freeform text, and Justin uses it to manage kind of his tasks and everybody else's tasks. So as he's running this team, you're like, hey, Rima, you have a task, or, you know, Amanda, you have a task, and he'll put it in there. So again, single pane of, tr single pane of, single pane of glass, single source of, source of truth. It's one place to go to find what you need in a very kind of easy and, and um, you know, inherent way. It kind of looks like OneNote. It does look like OneNote, and OneNote is coming. Okay. We had to wait for OneNote to get approval. Yeah. They're a fed ramp cycle. Yeah. So, <laughs> so if you click on the plus sign, that's where OneNote will be. Okay. So there's a plus sign where you can add these tabs into Teams. Eventually this will grow and you'll have more. So as they go through the accreditation process and get approved, we'll get more tabs in there. Do you have stream? Stream just dropped? Yeah, that's, that's new. Okay. Well, <laughs> so, however, you can add a link to your OneNotes wherever you store them, and it does work. That is absolutely true. Yes. So you guys have a workaround for this, which is pretty genius. Uh, you see key links. You can use a wiki for a number of things. I like to have it as like a readme. If, I, if I'm added to a team, where would I go first? So all of your key links, all of your key information you can have. Uh, immediately accessible to a new user. Did you want to um, just show what the uh, upload process looks like? Sure. Just for like a file. Like to a conversation? Yeah. Yeah, and hit like the attach function or something. Or you can drag it up. Whatever you want to do, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so Justin's going to upload a few things here. So you hit the paperclip icon, right? Similar to Outlook. The Wi-Fi is a little spotty in here, so. That's what I was there. gonna ask. So this is the speed of it is gonna be dependent on the speed of the network, right? Uh, yeah, yes and no. Yeah, I mean we've done a lot of performance improvements in general just to make sure we're using as little bandwidth as possible. Um, but yeah, obviously, like if you have really, really slow like Wi-Fi, it's gonna take a little bit longer to upload. Like for example, it usually doesn't take this long, okay. but everybody's on the conference Wi-Fi, so right. it's fighting. <laughs> so it's like I mean sometimes we're down on the network as far as SharePoint, Outlook, all that good stuff. Yeah, if so you don't have internet, correct. If you don't have internet, then you might need to go take a coffee break. But um, <laughs> yeah, sorry, I, I don't know what to tell you there. But, <laughs> but if, yeah, go ahead. Dennis, do you want to talk about yeah. how it's helped you? Sure. So, so as you mentioned, you talk about we're down with Outlook, things like that. So as I mentioned, I'm Dennis Polanski. So I'm the lead for the IRT. How many heard General Holmes speak this morning about the end user experience? How many heard about General Skinner speak this afternoon about the end user experience? Well, I'm knee deep in that. I was the email PRT lead. I work in AFNIC. I work with Scott Heitman. So if, if Justin, can you go down? Because you guys are on my PRT, IRT, right? PRT. There we go, you safety latency troubleshooting. Uh -oh. So, uh, the 38C, IG, AFNIC, you safety, A6, and uh, many others, 691st, 83rd, 26th. Everybody's been uh, working a lot of this. So, if you go to the files through our troubleshooting, we talk about one of the most disadvantaged sites, Interlook Turkey, in probably the you safety AOR. We found problems trying to um, share packet captures. I had a solution. I did talk to Justin a little bit, but I got a little aggressive sharing it with a lot of the team. So you can see a lot of the packet captures and all these uh, sources of information. Although Interlux's email wasn't working very well, we're downloading files to Teams and it's working just fine. So the team around the world, literally, this was done, a lot of it. Uh, we had a packet capture going on at one o'clock this morning. I got a couple hours of sleep. But, uh, and everybody's dumping them in the team so that the folks at the 38th at Tinker can review the packet captures. So folks at U-Safety, the 83rd. So everybody's using teams for truly a collaborative space. And it's working, working well. Probably not the most organized, but I'm learning. I love SharePoint, I love Justin, but I'm not as good as Justin at SharePoint, so I'm learning. But it is, it is critical 
to sharing information with your mission partners. I, to my 38 brethren back here, does it help? Has it helped? I know, I know that they have a net law team at Interlook that they said, hey, forget the net law mission. We are here for, for Interlook. And they've been doing a great job loading this stuff up. So truly a mission need was solved by using this. That's awesome. Thank you guys. No, thank you. That's, that's awesome. Did you want to uh, leave the parting story? I also want to show the, the last screen, the slide, to where they can go and get more information. Okay, so who's interested in finding out more about Teams and being able to use it? Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, there we go. Okay, so uh, if you want to find out more, here's my recommendation. Take a picture. So I'm sure all of you guys have a mobile phone, right? Take a picture of the slide so that you have the URL so that you can go visit it and find out more about Teams. We have weekly learning events. Did you want to talk about Tile? Yeah, so part of the rollout of this event towards the end of September and leading up until it, we're going to be running weekly learning events with all of the users who find their way into this service. We're going to be opening up and doing engagement events at the bases, uh, running public affairs articles. Uh, we're also going to be running AMAs, Ask Me Anything, through these learning events so that you can dial in if you've got a question about this or you want to know how to use it better or what we've learned, some lessons learned for you. Please dial in and join us. Yeah, and the contact down there below is uh, one of our colleagues who's helping to run the events, and that way, like Justin also doesn't get overloaded because he's leading this. So we want to make sure that he's got time to. You can send me a message in Teams, but don't email me. There we go. Yeah. Beautiful, love it. <laughs> That's all we have. To okay. Thank you. Yes. So, do questions. we have any questions? Oh, and yes. All of their contributions remain. Their access to those contributions get, gets removed. So we have more Q&A time at the Microsoft booth right after the session for an hour. And we also have some Power BI Q&A if you guys are interested in that. So please follow us at the booth if you, if you guys want to talk more about Teams. We're happy to share. Thank you. Thank you.